But uh, yo, is is the OnlyFans a motivator a motivator for you to stay in shape at this point? Like, how has that changed up your mentality? <laughs> yo, low key, the OnlyFans joint it kind of like I always was very like into the whole fitness thing, uh-huh. but like the OnlyFans thing, it's like that kind of makes me be like, I right, ain't no slacking, ain't no days off. You gotta stay in shape because this is work. Right. Who do you think your uh, primary audience is on there? Because I was talking to somebody the other day and they were asking me, they're like, oh, is Safari going to do stuff with his girl on his uh, on his OnlyFans? And I was like, oh, man, I didn't even think of that because I assume that there's a whole bunch of gay dudes out there that really probably would not be trying to see that. True or false? Yo, well, I got some stuff there and the stuff that I do got, you know what I'm saying? It is with my wife. So, oh, OK. As far as- as far as who's on it and the demographic and all of that, everybody is a bunch of secret profiles. Like OnlyFans is like a, it's like a dark underworld. Like, <laughs> it's not like Instagram where you got a profile and a bio. Right. Everybody's name is you, 3RC2829, 4, and you just don't know who these people are. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, man, I, I got really carried away because I started like everybody kept saying you got to do the, the Safari OnlyFans review. And I ended up getting just so deep into learning about the life of Safari in general that the video ended up not really even being about the actual OnlyFans so much. It was more like I was just sitting there putting together a fucking book report about this guy that, you know, I'd always been interested in, but I had never bothered to do like the full deep dive. Pause. Yeah, nah, and you know what? I really appreciate that because it's so ironic. My DJ, um, he was talking to me about you like two weeks before that because his son watches you. Mm. And he's, oh, Adam said something about Safari or whatever. And I wasn't too familiar with the whole, like, you know what I'm saying, with how big your channel was and everything. So then I went, and then that's when you did the review on me. And usually when people talk about me, I don't watch it because it just be super biased. They're not Mm. talking fast. They don't really go and do their history. They don't really go and try to find out like real shit. They just go off of headlines mm. and you can't pick the person off of headlines. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's clickbait. Right. See, I mean, that's the, the thing that I found or that made me want to learn more about Safari is I was like, listen, there's no way knowing how hard it is to, to pursue and land a, a high profile female, uh, counterpart wife girlfriend whatever i'm like there's no way that multiple women in the the entertainment world who are without question very high-end women very desirable lots of competition for their attention i I was like there's no way that these like multiple different girls that we all know are wrong about safari and as i dove into it more and more i was like man i can totally see what women like about him because you know you're a very uh i don't know you're a very like honest real person and actually i got that a lot from watching love and hip-hop which i didn't even bring into that video to be honest too i was like man i feel like my girl would like me more if i had a little bit more of a, a soft side like safari has you, you you know what with me i'm like i was raised by like all women my moms and my sisters so you know i just feel like it's way more work to be something you're not mm. like for me to just be me it's no work like, I swear, like, the opportunities and the things that, like, come to me that end up being blessings that kind of stem from, like, a bad situation or just something that was considered something so crazy that somebody else would have killed themselves. It's like, it always ends up just working in my favor. And it's just because I just feel like I put out good energy, good karma. There's situations and people know there's things that I could have did to be so messy and crazy and I just was always a kind of like person to be like that's not fun like it's it, it'll be something to talk about now but then in the long haul you know what I'm saying you don't want to be known as the guy who's just who can't keep their mouth shut definitely I mean there's always that temptation because we live in this like attention economy where if you are the guy in the headlines that day, you get all the attention, people are talking about you, et cetera, et cetera. But then at the same time, you know, there's the compromise. You don't want to, you don't want to put your morals to the side. You don't want to necessarily do something or say something you don't agree with. And there's always sort of that decision to be made of, of how you want to depict yourself. Yeah. Like, I just feel like with me, if it's something that's like super 
off the wall, like, yo, all right, you're dead wrong about this shit. I can't let you put this out there in the public and have people believe it. Then it's like, yo, you can't get mad at somebody for defending themselves. You know what I'm saying? But I, I was, I'm never the type of person to like antagonize a situation and just make it be super duper like extra and messy because like I deal with reality. Like people could do all of this internet shit and all of that, but like, yo, people really got to go outside. People got to really see, see each other. You know what I'm saying? And mm. shit gets dangerous. Like this is not something where you can just say anything and think you're going to go places and people are just going to see you and say, what's up? Like people get really hurt behind saying the wrong shit. Mm. You know I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, that was one thing that I sort of said in the video uh, that I made about you was I was like, it felt like Safari maybe had a weird transition period where you had been used to living like a very like, uh, you know, luxurious lifestyle during your uh, past relationship. But then all of a sudden you're kind of like out there on your own and you sort of went through this weird period where you went from like very low profile to all of a sudden super high profile but you're not necessarily surrounded by this big entourage and all the other stuff that you uh, probably had to deal with beforehand, right? Yeah, and when you when I heard you say that, it kind of gave me goosebumps because I'm like, yo, a handful of people really looked at like my situation like that, where it's like, okay, boom. You go from playing the back for all this X amount of time, and then all of a sudden, boom on TV, going places and everybody knows who I am now and shit. So my whole approach of, I don't need security. I, I'm still, I can still just go out and be regular and just do whatever. That didn't really like connect in my brain until like a real bad situation happened to me where I was like, you know what? I got to really start to move like somebody who's in the public eye. Mm. I don't even like to say the word famous. I like to say I'm in the public eye. So it's like, yo, if I go into a room of 2000 people, those 2000 people, they're going to know who I am. I don't know who none of these people are. And that's a super unfair advantage to me. So mm. I need to move accordingly. Yeah. And it's weird because you go through this time period where you think I'm a nice guy. I ain't did, did nothing to nobody. I don't got problems with people, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm good. But then at a certain point, you realize like, oh, shit, it don't matter if I'm a nice guy and it don't matter if I uh, I don't feel like I have beef with anybody because all of a sudden just fucking with me is a world star clip. Just just saying something to me is a TMZ post. So all of a sudden you're, you know, I, I remember when Gucci said back in the day, he's like, I'm a walking lick. And I was I didn't really understand what he meant at the time. But it's like you're you're a walking lick even without jewelry because you could get somebody a bunch of attention. And it's, it's super unfair because even I remember one day when I was in New York, like I went out to eat and it was me, my wife, her stepson and her godson. Like we were kids and we had walked into like a, um, this place to eat and there was like a table. We were in like a private section, but then like across from us, there was like a table of like some girls celebrating like a birthday. And like when I walk into places, I don't assume that everybody is a fan of me. So right. I'm not going to go around saying hi to everybody you know what i'm saying so i walk in i go to where i'm at and then like before i leave they're like oh he didn't even say hi to nobody blah 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 and then it just started the biggest argument started a huge fight with it, it just got so crazy so it was just like it just all that's out the window Oh, that's crazy, though, because it's like then you feel like you can't really act like a normal person because you walk into a room. And if, if somebody's looking at you, you're not you're, you're wondering, like, are they looking at me because they know who I am? Or are they looking at me just because somebody else is looking at me? And like to say hi to everybody, it feels kind of like fake and meaningless. Like, what's the point of even saying hi to somebody if I got to say hi to everybody? <laughs> exactly. And then like people really be like, oh, he was so rude. He didn't say hi. You didn't say hi. <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you walked in, you didn't walk in saying hi to everybody. So, like, I understand, okay, you may know who I am, but how do I know you like me? You could be like, you could be one of the people who's like, ah, I don't care about him. Right. So, I'm always also, too, you know, I'm on edge sometimes, you know, especially after going through traumatic things where you feel like what you almost you lost my... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going too. So, that was hard. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I'm in my 
I'm talking to Adam. You want to come say hi? Come say hi. Pick your head out. I got a blue belt. I'm breastfeeding. Hi, Adam. Hi. How you doing? No, you, need you need to do homework on me and do a video. All right. There's, we're moving that to the top of the list. We're doing that next. Shout out to Erica. Let me ask you this. In this new high-profile relationship that you're in, what, what are the rights, what are the things you're doing right now that you did wrong the first time around? Because it's, 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 you're in a very different position in your life, but what makes this relationship so much healthier than prior situations that you might have been involved in? I feel like now um, I'm, um, I'm used to being like in the position that I am and she is too and we're not I'm not with someone who 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 she doesn't think she's above me in any way mm. you know what I'm saying if anything for the most part she really uplifts me and just be like making me feel like like I'm the man you know what I'm saying and I didn't know like how well she was doing for herself until I got with her really? you know like there's some people out there they be really doing their thing and it's like if you don't pay attention you just won't know like she's doing so well for herself and if i wasn't like with her the way i am i would have never known that she was you know what i'm saying just doing so good so i just feel like we're just our personalities too are so similar like she's like a a female version of me with sexy juicy breasts fat juicy ass like you know what i'm saying and it, it, it works Another classic interview in the books. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and head on over to nojumper.com to support. Appreciate y'all.